Good morning and welcome to Holy Cross Lutheran Church online this morning. It's the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time and we begin as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join together in singing our gathering hymn number 248. Uh, it's also printed on page 5 in your bulletin. It's Dearest Jesus at Your Word and the words remind us of why we gather both at church or online to hear God's word and be blessed by it this morning. And so we join together in singing hymn number 248, Dearest Jesus at Your Word.
in with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, you are seated at the right hand of God to judge between the living and the dead. Help me understand how unqualified I am to carry out that work. Free me to serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in confessing our faith using Luther's explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed. The second article concerning redemption. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, and has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with silver and gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I might be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns for all eternity. This is most certainly true. We join our, uh, our attention in hearing God's word this morning. Today's first reading is Psalm 37, verses 1 through 11. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger, and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, 
they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot, and turn and maul you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I noticed how strange it was to say thanks be to God uh, when you hear about pigs trampling you or dogs mulling you this morning at the first service. Uh, but it is God's word, so we give thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. During uh, the week surrounding the 4th of July, I spent some time studying the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. You may say it was like a remedial civics class or a return to senior high school and the U.S. government course. And what, what I knew but had forgotten was how the founders articulated their commitments to faith in nature's God by naming him three times, creator, divine providence, and the supreme judge. The founders also listed the errors and grievances of Britain's king, which forced their hand into coming an independent country through the Revolutionary War. Then, in contrast to the tyranny of Britain, they laid out the foundation and the framework of the new republic in the U.S. Constitution. And although these documents were a product of their time and addressed a specific set of circumstances, they continue to be living documents which are to guide the three branches of government which also correspond to the three names for God included therein and the principles for those of us who give our consent to be governed. As I have mentioned before, the Sermon on the Mount is sort of like the Magna Carta of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. It's our Declaration of Independence for the Church. And like that declaration, Jesus outlines true faith in the gracious God who blesses the poor in spirit, the meek and merciful, and those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. But once you get beyond those famous Beatitudes, Jesus starts to list out the human errors and grievances, what you might call the failures of our human faith. And then in each little section, Jesus offers his own guidance and expectations for Christian conduct. As we have heard throughout the summer, much of the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' explanation to the Ten Commandments so that we might live before God in righteousness and innocence and in loving service with those around us. I suppose you could read the Sermon on the Mount and do the same thing that the writers of the Declaration and the Constitution did. You could see their list of grievances which uh, Jesus has for our simple, misguided understanding of the commandments and the disciplines of faith, including charity, prayer, and fasting, and the like. And then if you're really committed to the cause, you could make a list of correctives that Jesus offers. And then if you're really, truly committed, uh, like super pious, or as St. Matthew likes to say, righteous, then you would use the Sermon on the Mount as a guidebook to your conduct in matters of faith and life. And you'd finally achieve that excessive righteousness to which Jesus has been summoning us all summer long. 
But then we run into a problem, and Jesus knows this. Following Jesus is not a simple self-help seminar or a personal improvement plan for behavior. You cannot prove your righteousness by your impressive conduct. The righteousness of the kingdom of heaven is actually hidden from earthly eyes. But how quickly we sinners will wield it as a weapon. Once the old sinner in you has tricked God into giving you a blessing, then you'll want to show it off to everyone and become proud. And even if for a moment you become a shining example, you can't wait to show everyone else where they went wrong. Sinners are kind of crafty that way. Give an inch and you'll take a mile, bragging about your superiority and offering a corrective to other subpar sinners who don't measure up to Christ, because in your opinion, they never measured up to you. This is where Jesus steps in today and says, Judge not, lest you be judged. While Jesus is thrilled to have you along for the ride, he knows that you are still mortal and stuck in your sin. As we confessed earlier this morning, he has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature. He sees behind the charades and masquerades of false faith. Anyone still using earthly measurements of righteousness will sorely be disappointed when Christ comes on the last day and gives his final judgment. Yes, at the beginning of every day, you are given a clean slate. But by the time you walk out the door, or surely by lunchtime, you'll have to admit that you just haven't met the mark. Not even close. You have not loved God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you have not loved your neighbor as yourself. God's blessing and Christ's forgiveness is not earned or proven by a merit-based system. That's the whole point of Jesus' comments for today. The minute that you think you're better than anyone else, the minute you'd like to show anyone the error of your ways, Jesus says it's like pointing out the sliver in your neighbor's eye with no regard to the whole lumber yard that's coming out your own eye. What a horrible and disturbing image, and rightfully so. That's the whole point Jesus is trying to make. Disciples beware. Judging others doesn't lead you to an increasing righteousness, nor does it build the new world designed by God's will. Christians are not the measure of other Christians. Christ is the only measure. All others, including yourself, are sinners who have been forgiven your failings. At the beginning of the service today, you turned on your smart gadget and plopped down on the couch. And then you discovered that we were serving up a piece of humble pie. Our service began in the same way that it usually does. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, that such humility and grace would accompany us when the online service video ends. You see, in our world today, right now, I'm guessing that there are a lot of people who are bogged down by expectations, shame, and guilt. They already judge themselves. The way of the world is judgment. The way of Christ is love. You have been pardoned 
all your sin. You stand in the freedom of God's forgiveness. And as those who have been set free from the tyranny of sin, death, and the power of the devil, we know and can celebrate everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. We no longer hold the gavel, but the key that sets people free. What joy it is for us that we can surprise others with the same mercy and love that we ourselves have received from God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll join together in singing our hymn of the day. It is printed on page 6 in your uh, bulletin, online bulletin. Lord, speak to us that we may speak. It's hymn number 403. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here and abroad their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, and for those who are sick, including those impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, those who are sick, those who grieve, and those who offer care and wisdom. And also we remember those who are connected to our own congregation, Emily and Lars, Jim, and those dealing with cancer, including Mike, Mary Jo, Lynn, Joan, and Leanne. And we remember before you now the people we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time.
Send forth your power and presence, O God, that they might know your healing in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are at rest, and the families that grieve, including the family and friends of Roger Blessing, the family and friends of Elmer Peterson, the family and friends of Helen Vito, the family and friends of Lucille Ramstead, the family and friends of Terry Madsen, the family and friends of Emily Thomas, and the family and friends of David Burrell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A few words about our life together as we go on our way to mission and ministry this week. Uh, you know that we have started a partnership with PushPay. It's an online giving platform, and it's designed specifically for churches and serves us quite well in this time when we aren't uh, able uh, to gather together quite as freely. You might also make a one-time gift as you're looking around to Ramos Vivas on our PushPay app. That way we can support them as they continue to recover from the effects of Hurricane Isaiah's. We also ask that you would pray for uh, the people in the Cedar Rapids area who were impacted by that devastating storm that ran through Iowa, and also uh, similar to what people experienced in the Twin Cities uh, over the weekend. I want to remind you that I continue to be available for pastoral visits, both in the office or at your home. Uh, we've, I've also met some people outside of the coffee shop. Uh, it's important for us to stay connected, and if you or someone you know from our congregation is in need of some uh, gospel word, I encourage you to contact me so that we can reach out to those people. Also, Marky Goman, our licensed clinical uh, counselor, is here at Holy Cross on Monday afternoon. She's doing some great work. Be looking for a radio interview that she did on grief, not only uh, grief that uh, occurs in death, but also the grief that we have experienced because of the many losses uh, during the time of the pandemic. It's quite something, and I'll be glad to share that with you uh, coming this week. We also have the Jesus Storybook Bible videos. They're available on our YouTube channel. We encourage you to check those out, but also, and more specifically, for uh, the children that are in your lives, so you can pass those on by passing on the link. I want you, to, uh, want you to know that the church council met last Monday. We continue to think about the way that we are doing ministry in a time of pandemic. There will be some changes that are coming as we uh, anticipate our fall ministry kickoff that's coming on September 13th. Be looking for more updates on that as we get a little closer. Those are all the announcements that I have. I invite you to receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.